Are you my daddy? No, I am. <laughs> I think that the personality that is Tom Likas is a very sad person. I'm hot. On the scale from 9 to 10, I'm a 12. To be honest with you, I mean... 9 to 10? I should call you Sensei. You have transformed my life, and my future is so bright. You're a moron. You deserve to have these chicks take you for as much child support as they can get out of you. No way. You shouldn't wish that upon anybody. I'm wishing it upon you. Guys, if you're out there listening, no matter what they say, trust me, I was with her at the doctor's appointment when the doctor came in and said, there's nothing that's going to happen in having a child. And look at me, dude. I've got a seven-month-old son. I had an ex-girlfriend. She would go out partying all the time and stuff. Said that I couldn't go out and party. Said that if I went out and partied with, with my friends, that I'm going to be having sex with me. So I got fed up with that after a couple of weeks, and I had a DTD that day. <laughs> People listen to Tom. He's popular. He's famous for a reason, because this guy is a genius. He doesn't blow smoke up people's butts. He I know tells that. you what you need to know. You're a 10? Yes, sir. You're a 10, so you have Absolutely. no imperfections. Well, that's impossible because you are 30 years old, so you can't be a 10 anymore. That that time has passed. Oh, dude, why? Whatever. How'd she look naked? She looks good, man. Gravity wasn't uh, betraying her. Really? Nice set of cans on her? Uh, we're talking grade A. Grade A cans. What would be fun would be to sell some chick. Oh, sure, I'll take you to Paris. You get her there, you nail her for a night, and then you uh, bolt to another hotel. Don't tell her where you went. <laughs> Say it. That way she definitely has to pay her way home, and you got laid and she paid half. That's a great one. We'll have to put that in the, uh, in the appendix <laughs> of the textbook. I want to thank you for your services. You know, I, I got me three chicks this weekend, man. Really? Really? Three chicks. That's fantastic. All, all from listening to Father Tom. You'd be shocked how much, like, benefits I got from saying I was married with children. And I'd be out, like, banging women and stuff. And people, <laughs> the, 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 girls that, the girls that worked with me, the girls that worked with me, they'd always say, can we see pictures of your kids? I brought them kitchen, pictures of my sister's child. She was 48 when I was 19, my ex-girlfriend's mom. My parents found out my dad was real proud. Oh, that amazing. So how did she react when you told her you were done? She understood. I mean, she knew it wasn't, I mean, she wasn't looking for love. Did the ex-girlfriend ever call you again? Yeah, I never told her. Hooked up with her sister, too, but that's a different story. <laughs> Anytime you tell a woman, you know what? I mean, you're really only five or ten pounds over. You look great. <laughs> well, I don't take compliments well, but that's just my oh, issue. Really? These aren't compliments. <laughs> no, I'm just saying when they... You're my father. I disown my father, and you're my father now. So when you're using a, a, a no condom, you're flying blind. I'm pulling out. Pal, listen carefully, and I'm. I, this is very serious stuff. The pull-out method does not work. It is a myth. Oh, shoot. From Dallas, it's Flash Friday. I am your host, the man who gets more ass than a toilet seat. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind. Of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Six, six. Thank you for tuning in on this Flash Friday. Flash Friday, everybody, wherever you are. Headlights on, wherever you might be. Turn them on. Now we are getting into the, uh, the days after Labor Day. And, of course, what that means is that uh, 
It starts getting dark a little earlier. Maybe you're listening somewhere where it's dark right now. Put the high beams on, for God's sake. Or put a sign on your car. They could say anything. Like us 101, Flash Friday. Show me your cans. Whatever. The more indicators you put on your car that you're a listener, the more likely it is you'll get flashed. And we know this because people have told us. It's never even our idea to have people make homemade signs and put them on the car. That was the idea of listeners, and it has been very successful. So do it. Headlights on, man. If it, the sun is up, headlights on. If the sun is not out where you happen to be, high beams, signs, stickers, whatever you have to put on, do it. And ladies, if you see an indication that someone's a Tom Likas listener, for example, if you see the headlights on, you know what to do. Show that guy your cans. Whip out your knockers, baby. Unleash the fury. We flash you, you flash us. It is that simple. Why an open telephones on the Tom Likas show? Anything goes here, anything at all? Have you heard some of the things going on in the news? <laughs> That uh, moron, the former district attorney of Durham, North Carolina, Mike Nifong, you know where he is today? Jail. He's in jail. That's right. Unfortunately, he's only there for 24 hours on a contempt of court charge. I mean, the guy deserves to be doing hard time for a long time, and in the meantime... While he's in jail, the parents of the three guys who were falsely accused, they're in settlement talks, and the talk is they're going to get to $10 million apiece for their trouble. Plus, assuming the settlement goes through, a guarantee of legal reforms in Durham, North Carolina, so this can never happen to anybody again. I'm behind these guys 110 percent. I just, I just think they got screwed. And it is typical of the way we treat men in this society. We just assume that men are guilty. Men are guilty. They're men. They are predators. They are men. They're guilty. No evidence necessary. All you need is some squealing bitch. And you know the guy is guilty because men are monsters, men are pigs, men are creeps, men are predators, and women are delicate little flowers. They are victims of men. That's the attitude in the society now. And uh, we have to start punishing the people who, uh, who treat our justice system that way. The guys who get falsely accused of wife beating, the guys who get falsely accused of other forms of abuse, the guys who get falsely accused of rape, the guys who get falsely accused of being fathers of children they didn't father. I spent some time in my hotel room today here in Dallas. Now, you guys, if you are regular listeners, you know that at home I've got a TV. I don't have a TiVo. I've got seven DVRs. Four TiVos and uh, three direct TV DVRs. I've got seven of them. So I watch the shows primarily that I set to record, and I don't watch other TV except for, like, live sporting events and stuff. So when I'm on the road and I don't have that option, what I tend to do is flip on the TV set at the hotel. And um, if it's a bad day on the stock market, like today when I tuned in to CNBC, the Dow was down 210 points, uh, I would, I'd had enough of that. So I uh, flipped over to the uh, local TV stations here in Dallas I got to look at daytime television. And uh, just about every talk show that's on during the day now is people who don't believe their children are theirs and they're getting DNA tests. <laughs> I saw more DNA tests on TV today. It was unbelievable. That Maury Povich show, it has become the whole show. I don't think he does anything else anymore. It's just one loser after another having a DNA test. It's every day. Now it's just a theme of, rather than uh, having a different topic every day, every day it's DNA testing, but with a different slant. Today's slant was, 
I don't think the baby is his. It might be his brother's. So every loser who came on was a woman who was tearfully explaining that she'd been banging her boyfriend's brother. And that the kid they have together might be the child of the brother rather than the child of the guy she's dating. Who's been paying all the bills, by the way. Who has been acting like a father who's been stepping up to the plate. One of the poor suckers on this show was 17 years old and his girlfriend was 20. And he essentially dropped out of high school and was working two jobs to pay the bills. It turns out this this bitch was uh, doing somebody else. And she came on the Maury Show to confess. <laughs> but uh, how can you ever trust abroad when you see how many of them lie about stuff like this? And it's completely legal for them to do so. It's pretty outrageous. But yes, I watched Maury and all the DNA testing. Um, they even have found a way to get DNA testing now into the judge shows. I was really surprised about this. The DNA testing concept is so popular on talk shows during the day that they've now found a way to work it into judge shows. I was watching uh, the show Judge Mathis today. By the way, you know, years ago when they had judges on TV, you had a guy named Judge Wapner on the People's Court. And Judge Wapner had been a real judge for years. Then more recently, you had Judge Judy again, somebody who had been a judge and somebody who had been an attorney. But nowadays, I don't even think these people have any legal credentials. I don't think they know anything about being attorneys. I mean, all you have to do is have have an attitude. And that's what they all do. They all advertise that they're judges with attitude. You know, you get that... uh, You get that Judge Hatchet, who looks like Florence from the Jeffersons. Have anybody ever noticed that? (laughs) Remember the Jeffersons made Florence? I think that Judge Hatchet looks like Florence. If Florence had a daughter, that's Judge Hatchet. You know, but they all got that nuh-uh attitude, all these judges. Ridiculous. Half of these shows I haven't even heard of. I saw a show today uh, with uh, Judge Maria Lopez. Who is that? This woman doesn't appear to have ever been in a courtroom, except, I don't know, traffic court? (laughs) She didn't appear to have any legal credentials at all, as far as I could tell. You know, she just had a New York uh, accent and that attitude. They've got attitude. You got black women with attitude, black men with attitude, Latina women with attitude. <laughs> How about legal credentials? Well, don't worry about that. <laughs> I want you Judge Mathis today. And there's Judge Mathis. Hey, sit down and shut up, you fool. Hey, Mr. Johnny, come lately. Why don't you just sit down? This is a judge. Ever been to court? I was on trial for two months in Juneau, Alaska. Court's not like that. No wonder the average American is such an idiot when it comes to things like uh, the law or civics. Because the closest most people get to a courtroom is watching one of these stupid shows on TV. Today on Judge Mathis, they found a way to work the DNA concept into the show. Judge Mathis is a show where people come on and they, well... They, they, they say they're filing lawsuits, but I, you can only do that like a real court. And you're filing a suit. You don't even you're filing a suit. This is not a courtroom. It's a TV studio. So as a woman from somewhere in New England, boy, the accent just gave it away, not to mention the butch look of this woman. She looked like most of the women in, in, in the Boston area, beginning at about age 28, short hair, the most asexual accent Oh, and there she is. She's suing, suing. She's suing on a TV show with a fake judge. She is suing for emotional distress. She's suing her ex-husband because she says he beat her for 25 years. She never called 911, but he beat her for 25 years. So now she's suing for emotional distress. So you're thinking, God, what a, what a jerk this guy is. Then the guy tells his side of the story. We were going through a divorce, and uh, when we were going through it, she told me that uh, that our three kids are probably not mine. 
I mean, I don't think beating anybody is right, but you can understand the sentiment with somebody who would say something like that. Oh, and by the way, the kids, they're not yours. <laughs> Just wanted to say that before you go. Outrageous stuff. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So what happened was, she had said during the divorce, the kids are, may not be yours. So the husband, in the script, and I'm convinced this is not real life, this is a script, and these are very bad actors playing out a script. The husband demanded a DNA test to find out if the kids were his. So Judge Mathis, the fake judge, goes to the fake bailiff and, and has the bailiff bring the DNA test into the courtroom. I get They, they were getting their ass beat beaten by Maury in the ratings all the time, so now they had to bring DNA testing into Judge Mathis's courtroom. Pretty outrageous stuff. Yes, yeah, so I was watching all these shows. I was uh, just uh, mesmerized. It was one after another. I also watched Montel Williams today. You have to understand, now, You maybe you know these shows, maybe you've seen them a million times. I never see them, because during the day I'm either doing business, I, I am a productive individual, or I'm watching CNBC and figuring out what to do about my investments. The only time I ever see these shows is when I'm on the road and I'm in a hotel room like I was this morning. I don't have TiVo. I don't have uh, the same selection of TV channels I have at home. So Montel Williams today, what was Montel about? Montel today, and again, why are all the women so effed up in this country? Because they watch shows like this, and they like, this is, this is, you really get a read on how women feel. The people who produce these shows, they've done the research. They've done the focus groups. They really know what presses women's hot buttons. They know how women think. So the Montel Williams show today, get this, here was the theme, okay? It, it was a group of women, one after another, who came on individually. And uh, at some point... Elementary school, high school, college, early 20s, whatever. There was some guy in their life that, that was just, just some wonderful, goofy guy. And for whatever reason, one of them had to go to a college in another state. The family moved away. Uh, the woman was dating somebody else, whatever. For whatever reason, the two people stopped seeing each other. So now these women are big, fat fatties uh, in their mid-30s, and they come on and they tell these tearful stories about these guys that they went to high school with, and boy, they can't stop thinking about them. And what really pissed me off about this is thinking about the poor saps who married these chicks, these guys and everything, but meantime, all they do is think about guys from the past. One of the guests on the show, and I've warned you about this, they, they, by the way, Montel, this this was a real touch of class. You know, when I was a kid and you watched TV shows, they would say, you know, uh, guests of Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live fly United Airlines. Guests of uh, the Ed Sullivan Show fly Delta. You know, <laughs> guests of the Montel Williams Show, and I am not making this up. CheapTickets.com. And they show the logo on the screen for CheapTickets.com. Blew me away. But on top of that, get this. Talk about product placement. I warned you about this stuff. One of the people on the show supposedly went back to find somebody from their past using Classmates.com. And then the logo for Classmates.com appears on the screen. Like it was a paid mention in the show. And you see, this is what I've been telling you about Classmates.com. People don't join Classmates.com to hook up with the rest of the science club and discuss your, your recent experiments with a potato and some uh, iodine. They're not getting together to discuss, you know, the latest developments in math with the math club or uh, talking about the softball uh, endeavors of people who played on the softball team. No, 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 no. Everybody you went to school with who you want to talk to, everybody, everybody, you still have their phone number. You still know where they live. You left everybody back there in high school, and the reason you can't find them is because you married somebody else, and so you had to get rid of all the numbers of all the guys you used to know. Because your husband said, hey, who are these guys in your phone book? What are you doing? 
So you had to get rid of the phone numbers. And one good way to get all the phone numbers back again is to join classmates.com and let everybody from high school know that you're uh, sniffing around. I mean, really, does anybody believe you get on classmates.com just to... I mean, I hated high school and junior high school, and didn't you? Unless you were the homecoming queen or unless you were the quarterback, weren't those just miserable years? School sucked. Always being told what to do, all that brutalizing and stuff. What do you want to do, get on classmates.com and find the people who used to play dodgeball with you? I mean, come on. People get on classmates.com for the same reason they get on MySpace, to find people they had sex with or always wanted to have sex with and they have unfinished business. And sure enough, somebody on the Montel Williams show, there he is. Well, I went to classmates.com and the logo appears on the screen of classmates.com looking for some chick that he knew back in high school. And then what they did on Montel, which gives you an idea of the mentality of the big fat fatties who watch daytime TV talk shows. What these people didn't know is that that the Montel Williams staff had already found all of the people in question. So each person who came on had no idea that they were going to be surprised from backstage by the person they've been thinking about all these years. And every one of these people had been married or had kids. And then they just openly told Montel that during all that time they couldn't stop thinking. I couldn't stop thinking about Paul. I was thinking about him all these years. John, John used to make me jewelry. He was a Native American. I loved his long hair. And he was in a band, and he told me, come to California. But I told him, no, I have to stay here with my family. And then later on, I got married, and I had my two daughters, but I couldn't stop thinking about John. And you see these women in the audience crying as they're watching these stories being told. Then John comes from backstage with a new piece of jewelry he made for this woman who spent her marriage fantasizing about him. You know, this is the stuff women are interested in. This is the reason I have a very hard time mustering up a lot of respect for the intelligence, quote-unquote, of women. Who's watching these stupid shows? Who's watching them? I mean, that that was it. I, I did my thing in the hotel room today. Tomorrow will be Saturday, and there won't be any more of these shows on. So I had my Friday in my hotel room watching this stuff. But just scary, scary stuff. So yes, Mike Nifong is in jail for one day. That's happening. And finally, and I know I've been talking for a long time here, but there's so much going on. A couple of uh, new little scandals in baseball. Uh, Troy Gloss, formerly of the, well, he was with them when they were the Anaheim Angels. Now he plays for the Toronto Blue Jays. ESPN says that he received uh, shipments of uh, steroids. He's one of those guys who hits 30, 40 home runs a season and uh, it's well built, but gets injured a lot. <laughs> so somebody's going to want to talk to him, I'm sure. And then this baseball player named Rick Ann Keel. Have you heard about this guy? He plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. Years ago, he was a top pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. He wore number 66, and this guy was a hard throwing pitcher. And really good. And then one day, something in his mind snapped. Do you remember this story? The guy started throwing the ball too hard and too high, and he kept throwing it over the head of the catcher. And I think it was in the playoffs, he had five wild pitches in one inning. And suddenly the guy's mind, like, snapped. He could not throw the ball and put it in the catcher's mitt. He couldn't do it. It kept going over the head of the catcher. And if I recall the story correctly, this guy had therapy, went to a shrink, uh, but, you know, sports medicine. He was doing all these things. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. So rather than just quit baseball altogether, go into permanent therapy, he went to the minor leagues and, and learned how to become an outfielder and a hitter. And he made it back to the major leagues this year as an outfielder, and it was only about four weeks ago, and I saw his debut with the Cardinals about four weeks ago. And the guy has come to the major leagues, and he's hitting home runs like crazy. He's batting like 360. 
He's got nine home runs in four weeks. And the Cardinals have turned it around. They were pretty much out of the running for the pennant race in the National League Central this year. And now, what are they, a game or two out of first place? And it's ever since this guy came back. Well, it turns out in 2004, ESPN says he was receiving shipments of human growth hormone. <laughs> so you had this real good feel-good story in baseball. And now we see uh, that uh, maybe there was something more to the story. Anyway, we can talk about anything that's on your mind. It could be any of this stuff. It could be anything that happened this week. It could be anything you think we should have talked about. Keep in mind, I was gone. I was out of the country for 10 days. Maybe you want to update me on what happened while I was gone. Maybe there's something you think we should have talked about during that time. Maybe you uh, have been trying to get through on the phone, and you had no idea I was on vacation. That's all good. All we need you to do is stick your finger on the button and start pushing. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. You two are going to be flashing on the way down? If we see headlights. <laughs> Well, that didn't take long, did it? We have a lift <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Listen to that. Last Friday has begun. Oh, my God. Hot tub. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. And uh, let's go to your telephones. And there are so many. Your calls, just just a ton of them. This is Tehran. Tehran, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tehran. Welcome back. Thank you. Hey, what's going on with Shaquille O'Neal, man? He's getting a divorce. Man, you can't trust these females nowadays. <laughs> she took the man's money, extorted money from her husband. Well, we don't know about extortion or anything like that. Well, I'm sure we're going to find out everything because divorces uh, generally become part of the public record unless everybody's in agreement. And um, the one thing that I find troubling here is that Shaquille O'Neal is asking for an accounting of all the stocks and bonds. Where are they? Uh, I'm guessing, just my guess, that uh, Shaquille allowed uh, Shawnee to uh, make his investment for him or handle his money while he was busy uh, going out to work. And I would never, ever... You heard this on a rerun the other day, uh, right here. I would never allow a woman to handle my money. Never. Ever. Never. I would hire an accountant before I would allow a woman I was involved with to touch my money or to have control over how it's invested. Ever. Doesn't matter how much I love them. Doesn't matter how well it's going. Doesn't matter. So, well, we're going to find out more as this goes on. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for him, though. I feel bad for him, too. Uh, I mean, look, who doesn't like Shaq? I mean, everybody likes Shaq, except Kobe. Everybody likes Shaq. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I, I, he doesn't play for the Lakers anymore. I still like Shaq. I love Shaq. I met him once at the uh, subway once, and he was real nice. Are you talking uh, about the sandwich shop, or are you talking, uh, was he uh, taking the red line? <laughs> nah, he was uh, getting some lunch. <laughs> Really? Yeah, with his with his wife, I guess. I don't know. Guy makes, guy makes $20 million a year and he eats at Subway. Yep, that's what, that's what tripped me out. Like, wow, Shaq is in Subway chilling. <laughs> Did he get his uh, sub club card stamped? I don't know. I, I just went in there like he was already eating when I got in there. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't tell me he was sitting at one of those plastic tables at Subway. He could never yeah, fit in looking one. big, too. <laughs> he could fit in the table. And then my homeboy was like, my homie, his name was Rick, right? He got his name on his shirt, right? Yeah. And so Shaq was like, what's up, big Rick? And my homie was like, man, Shaq know my name. I was like, your name was on your shirt, idiot. <laughs> and then he was like, but he called me Big Rick, my nickname. And I was like, come on, man, you're a big guy. I will call you Big Rick, too. <laughs> but I love Shaq, and I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, I hope everything turns out right. Hope you don't have to give her no money, though. Now, you understand, if, if if Shaquille was a listener, 
and was a student of Lycus 101, he wouldn't be in this position now, would he? No, he wouldn't. That's right. So I guess he uh, he has to start listening, huh? That's exactly right. Hey, Tom, I got something good for you. What's that? I want to know, can you take me out Michael Vick style? <laughs> Michael Vick style? Do we have any uh, howling dogs or uh, gunshots? Check it out, check it out. I want it to be like a like electrocution sound followed by a whimpering dog. All right, well, let's see if uh, Art can pull that out. That's going to be a tough one, but uh, we'll see if he can pull that off. Whoa! <laughs> By the way, I, you know what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. You got to do them the other way around. I think I had it wrong. You well, First you want the dogs, then you want the zap. Do it that way. Start with the dogs. <laughs> then zap them. <laughs> then you zap them. <laughs> it's Michael Vickster. Sounds good to me, for God's sake. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. Screw this other stuff. Just talk about sex. Oral sex. The Tom Likas Show. From Dallas. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. A listener writes, Tom, you're so right about this over 30 thing. I was brought up in the Latino culture, and mothers were always telling their daughters to get married before they turned 30. I'm in a relationship right now and coming up on my 30th birthday and have been in a relationship for three years. If I don't get a ring this year, I have to start thinking about a new option because my time is running out. Luckily, I don't look my age, so that buys me some time. But I definitely agree that the ball game changes drastically when you cross that 30 threshold. It is very much slim pickings, especially because you're competing with younger women who want the same thing you do. As for the house husband thing, my co-worker has a live-in boyfriend. She's 37, 40 pounds overweight, and a high-paid professional who does not have a job, has put on weight, and refuses to get a job because he knows her options are slim. Where is she going to go? Who wants an almost 40-year-old single mother who works 12-hour days and is overweight? She has definitely missed her window of getting married to an upwardly mobile guy, and that's why she's in this relationship. It's so true. That's what she says. And it is. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number, wide open telephones. It's Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Listen, I heard you were vacationing down in the south of France. I was. I spent seven days in uh, Biarritz, which is a beach area uh, just north of the uh, Spanish border, so it's the south of France, and three days in Paris. I, you, know, you know, Tom, I think the French are a bunch of pussies. What do you know about France? How many times have you been there? Haven't been, but I just know that there are people that they, they, they can't finish what they start. Like what? Just like Vietnam in the 50s. They were over there getting their ass kicked over there, and then... Uh, How'd we do in Vietnam? Pardon me? How did we do in Vietnam? We got our ass kicked, too, because we were so stupid to go down there and... Uh, and so uh, so why in the world would you pick on the French? Uh, that maybe they did what we should have done. Well, they're the ones that went in there, you know, uh, you know, with guns a blazing and uh, thinking they well, were so going to do something. So about did we. It. So did we. But uh, so did we. Yeah, we did. It was a mistake. And, and by the way, yeah. And so, so why are you picking on France for that? Why am I picking on France? Because yeah, uh, did I, France lose? Did France lose fifty-five thousand young people? Yes, they did. No, they didn't. 
Well, they lost a lot of people over there, and like I like I said, they were. So, so why are they any worse than as us? As so as why as are as they? As wait, wait. Why are they any worse than us? Well, they didn't stay. As soon as we got there, they they, they bailed. Out. Yeah, and, and then what did we do? We stayed until they pulled us out. Who pulled us out? President uh, President Ford pulled us out. We pulled ourselves out. Well, it, well, the president pulled us out. Well, that's it who pulls you out of. That's who puts you into a war, and that's who pulls you out. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you know, uh, you know, the French. I, I just, I, I think you're, no, no, they're... you're just ignorant, and you spend time listening to AM conservative talk shows or Bill yeah. O'Reilly or morons like that. And then you repeat the stupid things they say without having any understanding. At least those people read books and stuff. You don't even know what you're talking about, and you've never been to France. I don't want to go to France. You know nothing about it. Anyway, I say pour out your Bordeaux, throw away your Brie cheese, and... What uh, for? Wait, why? Because you're a moron? You said they and, don't... And now, and now, speaking of pulling out, I can tell you're going to run off the phone like a little boy because you know I've got you where I want you. You don't know what you're talking about. And just like uh, what you call the French being pussies and running away, that's what you're about to do, aren't you? No. All right, you tell me specifically why I should throw away my Bordeaux. Why should we buy anything from France? Because we buy things from China, we buy things from Bangladesh, we buy things... I was at the Gap the other day, they had clothing made in Vietnam. I mean, we, we, we buy things from all over the world. What do they buy from us, Tom? What do they buy from us? Uh, yeah. Levi's, Levi's, uh, they, I was just in France... They buy Coca-Cola from us. I mean, I, the list is long. You know how many American products are for sale when you're in France? Pepsi. Everywhere. Everywhere. What do they buy from us? You're an idiot. Okay. Do you know how many, do you know how many Chevrolets I saw in France? Uh, probably more than I see in Los Angeles. Um. You're, you're just ignorant. And you, you really have nothing to back up what you're saying, except you listen to Rush Limbaugh or some stupid show like that, and that's where you get your opinions from, and you don't know what you're talking about. I don't even li listen to Rush Limbaugh at all. You re but the point is, that's where you get your opinions from, conservative talk radio, don't you? No, I always listen to you. Well, uh, where do you get this idea that France is so terrible? You've never been there. You don't know anything about France. Where do you get this idea from? You don't read. Oh, my nephew was just over there like three weeks ago. He just got back, and he said they're kind of rude. He said they're kind of rude. How did that become their pussies? Well, I, I, I just think they are. I've been to New York. They're kind of rude. Does that mean Americans are rude? No, no, not at all. Why not? Never been in New York. Ever heard about New York? Yeah. Uh, ever heard that those people have an attitude? They're kind of rude. Ever heard that? Sure. Yes, I have. Right. And you've never been to Paris either. So uh, they, wh why would you even speak about Paris? Well. Right? I I really just don't, I wouldn't want to go there. You know nothing about France. Nothing. Nothing. Do you? I, I don't. I, no, I don't. Right. And so, uh, you did, but you never let ignorance stop you from expressing an opinion, right? I'm going, right? to, I'm going to let ignorance stop me from expressing an opinion. I'm asking you. You, you know, I say you never have allowed ignorance to stop you from expressing an opinion. You know nothing about France, but you're still very opinionated, and you want to call in and mouth off about something you know nothing about. Isn't that right, Buster? Well, I'm just giving my opinion, Tom. It's, a, it's an opinion based on ignorance, isn't it? Well, I've never been there, and I've never experienced the people over there. But So you know I, nothing I, about it, right? No, I've never been there. So you know nothing about it, but but you have an opinion about it. I do. So you don't let ignorance get in the way of expressing an opinion, obviously. The Tom Likas Show.